Welcome back to Almost Machining. My name is Phil, and what we're looking at right here is a B6055B quill assembly from a K.O. Lee B2060 tool and cutter grinder. I was grinding apart, and I heard the bearing spin. I didn't like it at all, so I went ahead and I took it apart. All of these pieces that are black over here, I took them, I cleaned them up, removed the rust that was on them, and then blackened them using Fresnel's Oxmo Blue. That came out really nice, and right now I'm about to remove a little bit of rust and pitting using some of rust on the actual uh, quill body itself really quick. So give me a second to get gloved up, and we'll remove the little pitting and see how that turns out. What I have is... Some older, it's still really good, but I poured it out to do some other cleaning, rust removal on the other pieces. It's just evapo rust. And yeah, normally we like this stuff to soak. I'm not after a, a soak appearance. The body here is in good shape. And as long as I don't try to change any of the dimensions on it, I can get this stuff on, wash it off, and go from there. It's minor pity because this is how it's, it's held between these areas right here. And then the rest is just free floating in the air on the sides. The spindle shaft goes through. And we'll talk about the insides. When we get to that point. It didn't seem too bad, but once I once I took it apart, I hadn't really ran the machine a whole lot since I got it. I knew that there's some work to do. And the bearing spin freely. It's a high-speed spindle. I only have the one pulley set for it, which runs it at a moderate speed. I think it's one to one, so the typical grinding speed I think is right at the 30, 34, 3500 RPM. And it's done well. I just needed a better finish on my part, and I could tell that something was wrong. And as you can see, just by applying and gently wiping, the previous rust is coming right up. It's not like a skateboard broke out of that noise. When I got in there, all the grease that were that was in the bearings was just a solidified mass. So there was no new lubrication whatsoever happening. And I don't uh, I don't know what the maintenance procedure was previously. Another thing that I noticed when I took it apart is there were some pieces, there were some shims, that were in a different location than what the typical factory installation would have. I'm going to put them back in the same way that they came out. And that's just to make sure that I'm not changing anything unintentionally. I don't know if anybody else was in this before. It seemed like somebody had been in it at least once. The bearings, I was able to clean them. I did a, an acetone, acetone dip. Let them soak and then just spun in my hand freely. I didn't uh, no air whatsoever. And just clean them repeatedly over and over again until I've achieved what I thought was good. And then I have them sitting in a plastic bag right now. Until I'm ready to actually pull them out, clean them off again, and start lubricating them. I have a Kluber grease tube over here that I'll be using. I'll probably do a 50% fill on those. This will probably be sped up. And this is typically how I'll use the, uh, the rust remover. Instead of just dipping the part in and letting it sit overnight. Because it's not, it's not heavy. I just want to clean it up. I don't want to get anything on the inside. Might remove it. All right, so. See, this is one of the areas that was exposed and rusted. Anytime I struggle to rest the hand on it. And then inside, on this one, you can see that there's a retaining ring. And that's one of the backs of the barriers that keep the I mean, toothbrush that I blasted through the ultrasonic cleaner after wiping the threads down on the inside of the barrel of the, of the quill body. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the brush again and rebrush the threads and blow it out. Assembly is at least complete to the point where I feel comfortable with putting it together. So I, I've now isolated this with whatever little bits are left on it. I'll do, when I start assembly, I'll do a final blow to make sure that there's no little bit of dust on it. Let's carry on. So here are the bearings. They have been cleaned in acetone. They have been went down, cleared of all the old grease. These are Fafner 9305K. And they are marked also with an MM, which means that these are class seven. And they have high spots or eccentric marks on the bearings themselves. It doesn't show the number as to their as in, their out of roundness, eccentricity. Let me get a, another clean can so I can do a re-dip re in probably isopropyl alcohol and get them clean again and into another bag. What I have here is an old dog bowl. <laughs> They're so uh, lightweight that when the dog kind of started entering into her teenage years, she could throw this thing around pretty good. And then coffee filters. If you're in a pinch, you don't really have a, a lint free rag, coffee filters are pretty good substitutes for that. I'm going to use this with some acetone to thoroughly clean this bowl. And with everything else in the shop, the minute I set something down, the dust is just going to rain from the sky onto it. So when I'm done cleaning this, it's going to go upside down for a minute. And then just some pure isopropyl alcohol. Very nice. And no contact in. Get this clean. When I took them out of the or took them off the shaft, I didn't have to press them. They just pulled off nicely, and they immediately went into the acetone wash at the bottom of the acetone bottle or at the, the container that I had them in. There was a substantial amount of red and uh, brine from the previous grease. I'm just doing my best. 
whatever you do, you never want to blow air inside of a bearing to try to clean it. Just gentle, slow as you go. I wish I had the ability to have new bearings for this. I do not. Make sure my other glove hand is clean. Wipe my gloves really quick. So right now that I have this open, dust and everything else is just raining in from the sky. And these aren't the most exactly sealed bearings in the world anyway once they're inside the quill. When we get to that point, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So here's my bag with a little bit of, of the isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to open it, give a quick jiggle, and it goes. The next bearing, quick jiggle, and it goes, close it up. And then whatever, whatever little particles now that get washed off of these bearings at this point in time, they will be left inside of this bag. If there's any whatsoever. And then I will transfer them from this bag to the other bag while I will apply the grease. Now Robin does a really beautiful way of setting up for lubricating his bearings. I like, don't have that ability right now. Lots of agitation. I'm looking for any kind of particle that are hanging out in the, in the bottom here. I'm not seeing any of those. So these are non-microscopically as clean as I can make them. Moving on. So those aren't, uh, I'm not ready for that. Now I still have my acetone in this container. These parts all go on the outside. Now, um, I have precision ground, ground flat stone these. A high spot here, high spot, high spot there that touched. I'm not going to change this. I, I can put it on the grinder, surface grind this, redeck this. But I don't want to change it from what it was before because I don't know how far it was out. So the intent here is to leave it as it is and go on from that point. I can always revisit this. And then the main reason for that is because I'm going back into the same bearings. If I had new bearings, it would be a little bit different story. The other one, it had multiple high spots from the stone. These threads have all been cleaned. I'll use the toothbrush again on all these pieces. Let's start with getting the, the shaft ready to go into a bag as well. <clears throat> so this one, what I did was I filled this cavity with the same cleaner that I use in my ultrasonic cleaner. And then I put my finger over it, insert it into the tank, and let it sit for two minutes. Pulled it out, wiped it off, r rinsed, and oiled apart. I also use the precision round flat stones on these surfaces here. You can see here's where more that threading is. You can also see the high, high spot X. I'm sure if that's... Yeah, there's a small X here. And then if I go down to the other end of the shaft and rotate it just a little bit, here's the other X right here. So I'll put the marking spot on the bearing 180 degrees away from this and then 180 degrees away from the other one, even though these two are not quite 180 degrees off. So it's here and here, almost, uh, almost 90. Let's get to clean this guy off. So I have my new bag ready to go. And the toothbrush over. That's that's purple. I'm gonna just clean these threads again. Let's bring it back down to the Okay, I'm sticking with the idea that everything must be clean or as clean as I can make it. Put a new set of gloves on. Get those bearings out of that bag. Dry them off. Blow, blow them off. And then into another bag. There we go. I'm going to make sure the rest of the bag is washed in as well. Clean these guys up. I have my other bag ready to go. Do this one at a time. Remove, seal, blow. And the other clean bag. The other one is out. And then the K bag. I'll retain this for later. Not sure why I might need that later, but we'll turn that retain that for later. This is a Kluber. Oh boy, GL261. Probably not the best grease for this, but I'm not running this in high speed. Uh, in, in a high speed method, I'm here to pull this up. If I do, I will change this over to other Kluber grease. Get this cleaned up. It's been sitting around for a while in the toolbox and accumulated some grit and stuff around the end. Oh, so scary. Little guy, he's uh, looking at his game right now, so if you hear him, it's just extra funny commentary. We did have an agreement that he was supposed to be quiet. We'll see how well that holds up. Fingers are clean if I can get them. Works a little bit. Gets cleaned off. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six. Put this under the bag. And I'll circumcise this in the best I can. I 
ay 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 my grease is slippery what I'm starting to develop is that little bit of almost getting that little bit of grease inside of there little, number six let me go ahead and line up the marks on these bearings really quick there's that one Okay, these have been aligned, and these have been aligned. That's not gonna, it's not gonna matter other than knowing that I have two chances to make sure I have the mark here to where I can get it on the opposite side of the shaft as I go together. So on the shaft right now, I have the end with the snap ring on the upside. This is the, the let's get this ready to go. I have the bearing, I won't leave this up here yet. Just uh, raise it up a little bit to allow the shaft to go further down. I have cut a hole in the bag on this side, and I have my X lined up. I have a bearing that goes on that side. Right here, bring it up to the front. Now this side does not get the front washer, it only gets the two rear ones. And I also have the, the nut. Okay, you get a bigger hole to work with. This is just to keep the dust from falling onto all this. Get the train out. Check the alignment marks. They're there. Contrast them with the one here. Now, based on what I'm seeing with the wear or with the the wear, this one had the marks in line with the eccentricity portion of the shaft. I'll put it back on the same way that it came apart. Hopefully I don't have a problem getting this on. Let me check that alignment again. Pull up a little bit. There. Get this cover back up. Okay, the quill. Make sure I have enough room. Put on the other side. Slowly walking it in. They're not, these are not press fit at all. I'm not going to apply anything. I should be able to bring it down the rest of the way with a nut. Go ahead and get the other side going. This one I'll do the exact same way. I'll put the alignment marks on the portion of the shaft that has the mark. It seems just counterintuitive. There's my alignment mark. There's the sparing. No, the rest is this way. Make sure I have a double check those marks. Up there. Slide indicator inside. Go a little more. 
It's right there. Try to. It's a 50 million syndicator, so this might not. There we go. So we get. It's half a thou doing it like this. I don't know what it was before. It's a little more than half a thou. Two thousandths. I run it. When it's running, not very much at all. I like this. I need to let it run for 50 minutes. I use a uh, mild preload. Just kind of snug them up. Got the shaft where the shaft's already tightened back at all. Before you can hear the bearing spin, uh, that was not uh, that was not something that was very happy for me. Let's put a put an arbor in and see how the arbor runs. Got a clean arbor here. That's good. So the first thing I want to check is the. Let's go ahead and check the OD. I think the OD is pretty more on this one, but we'll go and check OD where the where grinding wheel would run. Right here. We should give you some adjustment. I'm excited about this grinders back together. We're going to get on to doing some more cylindrical grinding to get what I am needing to have done done and that'll be the follow-up video. Thanks for watching.